Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office for Wednesday, December the 27th, 2023. There are some big, big, serious changes that we need to digest in today's video because this could really change the weather for a while into mid and early January. To start things off, here's a look at the current satellite imagery from the College of Dew page, and we could see what areas are getting the most active weather and which areas are not. And so we can see here a big pinwheeling surface low and upper level low over the Midwest, bringing snow, bringing cold temperatures, strong winds. We even had an ice storm a couple of days ago in the Dakotas, knocking out power to thousands of people. And then, of course, we're looking out towards the west because another storm system is encroaching over the region now with another one this weekend. So when we look at the global computer models, especially the Euro, over the next five to ten days, you can see that there are going to be notable weather pattern changes coming not the warm December that we've been enjoying for a while, but instead we're actually going to see a big pattern change. So look at for this afternoon, we can see the first system approaching into the Pacific Northwest like Oregon, Washington. So if you're in Salem, if you're in Seattle, Portland, Crescent City, if you're in Sacramento, if you're in San Francisco, yeah, there's going to be rain this afternoon into the evening hours, maybe a thunderstorm or two that could occur we also have some active weather across the Northeast. So if you are in, say, uh, Baltimore, if you are in, say, Easton, if you are in Washington, D.C., if you are in, say, Central Pennsylvania, if you're in downtown New York, yep, a lot of people still on vacation enjoying your guys' trip for New Year's. Yeah, you're going to want to stay tuned here in just a second for the New Year's Eve forecast because a lot of people are going to be drinking beer. They're going to be drunk. People are just going to be um, partying, right? They're going to be partying. And I'm going to be doing the same here on the YouTube channel, potentially. Fingers crossed that I don't work on Sunday, but if I close, then probably not going to be able to live stream, unfortunately. Actually, I might be able to um, for like an hour or so. So going forward, uh, the pattern remains fairly active, especially for the West. So the next storm system impacts California, the Pacific Northwest, with the residual storm system moving across the Northeast, bringing some snowfall for that area. That kind of wraps all up. And then maybe another system tries, tries to go into Southern and Central California by early next week for New Year's Day. But New Year's Eve looking pretty good overall. Actually, this is New Year's Eve. Excuse me for that. So New Year's Eve looks pretty dry for most areas. So a good day or a good night to party, to go out, other than it might be cold for some locations. But it should be virtually dry unless you are down here in Louisiana and possibly portions of the Intermountain West. But looking good, looking good, including for Canada. And then going forward, then that's when that system comes on in, um, especially for maybe January the 2nd and the 3rd, maybe another big system impacting California and the, um, the Sierra Nevada mountain range with more rain potentially for southeastern Texas, another deep south rider, what we call going to uh, really develop um, quickly, and that could bring a lot of rainfall, some gusty winds, that sort of thing. And then that moves offshore with another one of those southern riders likely to develop by the weekend of January the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th. But really, uh, when you look at a precipitation perspective, you might think, not a lot's going on, David. Where's this pattern change coming from? Well, you got to look very high up above my head, all right? See my head right here? Got to look higher than that. So we're looking at 80 to 90,000 feet, and you might be asking me, why is David looking at the stratosphere? This doesn't apply to us. It does, because what this is going to do is it's going to weaken the polar vortex. Right now, the polar vortex is chugging along nicely right a lot of the cooler air confined into higher latitudes over the north pole but once this stratospheric warming event gets going i would promise you a lot that we're gonna have a lot of chaos going on the the polar vortex is gonna go nuts we're gonna see colder outbreaks than we we, we have never seen before yet this season and some areas around the world like the uk and even perhaps over Greece, as well as even Siberia, could have some of the coldest temperatures ever recorded 
for the the January period. So consider that, okay? Um, big time pattern change coming in terms of the temperature department, not so much as far as precipitation goes. So going forward, is this is the look at the next three days. Take note, the polar vortex is over here. It's pretty strong over Greenland, over portions of the UK. But take note of this blob on your screen. See this rod in here? That's the stratospheric warming event. There were what we call an SSW or a sudden stratospheric warming event. And what this means is, again, the polar vortex is going to be very weak. And look at this. I mean, come on. Oh, my gosh. This is the 1st of January. This is very, very bizarre. This is ironic. This is exceptional by all standards. I mean, look at that warm blob at 80 to 90,000 feet above the surface. This is really going to mess with the polar vortex by a huge margin. So don't be surprised if some of the deterministic models, this is the ensemble, by the way, from the GFS that shows this, but the deterministic is even on board with this. If, if you think I'm lying about this, let's look at the Euro uh, deterministic right on board with this sudden stratospheric warming event. Uh, and if we look at the GFS deterministic forecast, the 18Z run of today that's right now rendering, showing the same thing. So there is excellent agreement that this is going to cause a lot of weather disruptions across the northern hemisphere. I mean a lot. Okay, so this is going to continue, and then maybe that warming event could end by mid-January. But this is going to have a huge impact on our polar vortex for a while to the point where, you know, maybe January could end up being one of the coldest months on record for the, the United States, right? We had a really warm December. We might make that up for a very, very cold, maybe historic January. Again, what I just said doesn't mean it's going to happen, but you know, things could come together for a very, very cold January, indeed, at least for the Northern Plains and for the Eastern half of the US. That's kind of the guarantee here that I'm thinking of what might end up happening. Might not happen in early January, but it's gonna happen um, somewhere in there. All right, so when we take a look now at our European ensemble um, uh, pressure pattern or what we call our height anomalies, Okay, all 51 members, right? This is the more accurate forecast and more, uh, more generous, I should say. And so this is going to show us a couple of things. First of all, what you're looking at is the height anomaly. So areas in orange, uh, pink, and red indicate higher heights than normal, right? Warmer temperatures and there's no cold air outbreaks, right? And then when you get these below average heights right out here in the Pacific and the Midwest, these are below average heights, cooler temperatures usually, and more unsettled weather. Okay, so the blue shading is below average. The orange and red and pink shading is above average. So let's put this into motion. Let's see with what's going to happen here over the next seven to eight days. And we can see still the same thing. A lot of wave break-offs. Okay, we got a ridge here that tries to build in in the Northeast Pacific. That's a consequence of a very strongly positive phase of the EPO that is going to um, soon get going with eventually a negative PNA over Western Canada, followed again by a really... Uh, highly amplified or somewhat amplified troughiness in the lower 48. When we go forward in time into beyond the 10-day period, look what happens here. This is what gets my attention. And I showed Ethan B. this last night, a, our, my severe weather expert, by the way. You guys know him very well. Look at, I drew a little bit of a stocking. Doesn't it look like a stocking? Maybe I didn't, okay? I'm... Okay, so... Me and him were talking about this, and he said if this verifies, this could be historic. We could see some of the coldest temperatures in January, and I'll show you some of the past runs of that in a second. And then when we go out to 360 hours out, I mean all below average heights now being indicated on the Euro Ensemble forecast. The Zero Z also pretty consistent. That was last night's run, and then yesterday morning's run really uh, very consistent here. There has not been a wiggle, just not going all over the place. So the whole deal here is 
I'm strongly confident that at least the first half of January, we're going to have some really bitterly cold temperatures. A lot of Arctic outbreaks. And again, this might surprise you that, oh, we're supposed to be in an El Nino, right? David, where's El Nino at? Well, pattern kind of oscillates between warm periods and cold periods. And this is one of those periods. It's going to be cold. It's going to be drier probably more windier too. So when looking at the temperature anomaly forecast over the next one to two weeks, we can see that right now it is definitely warm over Canada, as you all can see, including for the Northern Tier and the Pacific Northwest. But this is when the changes come. Pay close attention. It's after we get beyond the eight to nine day forecast when the pattern looks to change. Now, this is still quite far out and there's still a lot of room for air in the models to prevent such changes like this to occur but what i'm telling you is with that stratospheric warming event this is going to really have some implications on what will happen to the polar vortex which means it's going to really weaken further and what that's going to lead to is over the next 13 to 14 days is cold temperatures over across much of the desert southwest, maybe even in the, the mid-south, as well as even in Canada. Gonna see some below average temperatures. Some of that Arctic invasion trying to move southward, but according to this model, it is not as robust. Now looking at the GEFS ensemble forecast, the 18Z is still in the middle of rendering. So we're gonna look at the 12Z forecast and we can see definitely a little bit of a different uh, pattern look here on the GEFS versus the Euro, showing pretty much the entire United States virtually with at or below average temperature. Now, before I do in this video, there are a couple announcements that I wanna share with you all so you guys are up to date with what is going to be going on here. So first of all, if you wanna support the YouTube channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Again, this means a lot to me because it keeps me on the road at making these forecasts for you all on a daily basis. Share this, also hit the like button, and leave a comment in the section below. And then secondly, if you haven't checked out my Sacramento weather um, website, be sure to check that out. There will be a link in the description. In fact, this is kind of what it looks like here. I'm going to have a little bit of an image on that uh, right here. So be sure to check that out in the link in the description below this video. And also be sure to check out my Twitter page. There will also be a link in the description below this video. But also, I wanted to show you all something really cool that you're going to really like seeing very much. What does this say? Well, it says Meteorologist Drive. It's a road sign that my dad gave me for Christmas. So thank you, dad, for giving me this. I really, really love it so much because it really describes of who I am. I'm not a meteorologist, I'm not certified, I'll be honest with you with that. I'm gonna be going to college hopefully soon, probably in the summer or fall, to get my, uh, eventually to work my way up to getting my AMS degree. But yes, meteorologist drive. Who wants to go down meteorologist drive with? Let me know down in the comments below this video. But otherwise, that is going to sum it up for today's weather forecast. I'll be back with you more tomorrow.